Hi Libra, this is your singles reading for April for Libra Sun, Moon, Rising, or Venus. Personally, I think the Moon sign resonates the best, but you watch what you want. This is also if you are spying on a Libra. So we're going to talk about what your month looks like in general. Uh, what is it that you want this month versus what you actually need? Um, how do other people perceive you this month? And what is the best course of action to actually get what you want? And then how is this Mercury retrograde going to affect your love life? So let's get started. Libra, in general, your love life looks exciting. It looks confident. It looks passionate. Um, but maybe not entirely fulfilling on an emotional level. Okay? So um, this is definitely not like a selfish energy. You could be giving a lot to this relationship that you might come into contact with or, you know, any people you might be meeting. You might be super attracted to them. You might be having an awesome, sexy time with them. But, like, as much as you really want to feel something for them, maybe that's a challenge. Okay? But you're trying. So that's good. What is it that you think you want in April in regards to your love life? And they're saying <laughs> somebody that you don't have to text as often. So that's interesting. But you want things to change really quickly. You want things to move fast, even though another part of yourself is competing with that energy, saying, like, I also don't want that either. Like, part of you wants something that's stable and long-term, you know? And then the other part of you is like, no, I just kind of want something lusty and casual. So you're on both ends of the scale here. Now, the reason why you're having this sort of dissonance between, like, what you think you want versus, like, the other thing that you think you want um, is because you know that one of those things just isn't a good match for your life right now. And you've learned this the hard way. You've learned a lot of lessons. You put them in the past. And you just don't want to deal with any bullshit. And that's understandable. So what is it that you actually need, though? And they're saying, well, what you need to do is just, like, wherever your passion is, go out and focus on that. That's okay. That's good. They say um, you need to, like, kind of be in this passionate, fiery, exciting energy just for now. It could turn into your happily ever after. Because, you know, like a long-term relationship without passion and, you know, enthusiasm and excitement is not going to be very fun. And so they're saying it's challenging to maintain that in a relationship. And sometimes relationships that start that way, um, they could either fizzle or that becomes the focus of the relationship and then it's hard to take things seriously. But they're saying like in this specific instance, if you meet somebody in the month of April who is very um, exciting to you on that kind of a level, that this time is different than before. Like, if you've met somebody like that before and it all fell apart, this time is different. It's not going to be an icky, nasty, abusive sort of mess. Not to say that everybody, you know, who was in a passionate fling that ended like it was abusive, right? That's not what I mean. But I'm just saying there's not really that much stuff here that is bad or negative surrounding the situation. It could end up to be something actually truly magical for you. They're saying... um, you know, hold on to it loosely, like that Journey song, I think. I think it's Journey. I don't know who sings it. But um, hold on loosely to this. Like, don't have any expectations, but knowing that, you know, anything is possible. Okay. So how are other people perceiving you this month in regards to love? Um, well, so your friends and stuff, they might say, oh, well, you're making bad decisions. Like, that's not actually what you want. You know, like, that doesn't make sense for you. Um, but you know what? <laughs> Their opinion is something that you get to just say, it, you know, opinions are free. <laughs> it's worth what I paid for it. Okay. You do you. You trust yourself this month. They're saying, um, be very active this month. It's very important with all that fire energy that you're super active, but also that you're not hamstrung on the details and thinking ahead too far. Like, Hanging on loosely, as I mentioned. Now, the best course of action for you to get what you want 
is again that fire energy, that enthusiasm, that confidence, that passion, that lustfulness um, without being too hamstrung on the details. Now, um, how is this Mercury retrograde going to affect you? And they're saying, well, part of you, oh, this is like, I'm getting like a big ringing in my ear. Okay, so um, when it happens in my right ear, that's like, this is so important, guys. So this is really important for somebody. Um, some of you out there might be like, you know what? It's a bad time to start new things in a Mercury retrograde. They're saying this time is different. In your love life, this time it's different. If it is, um, if there's somebody out there that you feel very, very attracted to, like on a physical level, okay? If they're very exciting to you, if you really just want to bone them super bad, this is something that you should go after and you can't just like wait around until the retrograde's over and just like hope that that attraction's still there. Now they're saying because if you do wait, you'll be hurt because they might not be as spiritual as you. They might not know about the Mercury retrograde and in the meantime, we'll hook up with somebody else and now your opportunity's gone. So this month... You have to jump on that opportunity if you're one of those lucky people who has that sort of attraction to somebody. They said, yeah, there's going to be challenges involved in that, especially with communication chasms and things like that, but you have to do this. Otherwise, you're going to miss your opportunity. So um, I wanted to kind of look at a theme for you guys. Okay, and there it is. <laughs> and um, so the theme is ritual, but it came up in reverse. So they're saying like, Rituals and stuff, stuff we know about like full moons, new moons, Mercury retrogrades, doesn't apply to Libra in your love life in the month of April. Um, so they're saying if you're going to do any rituals at all, um, like they're going to have to be a little bit different than usual. OK, like your belief system just for this month needs to change. You're not supposed to be in this like calm, still sort of energy of all this fire, enthusiasm, passion, excitement that you need to use. Use it before you lose it. OK, um, now, should you be worried about, you know, in the Mercury retrograde trying to release pain to like clear some space to walk through new doors? No, fuck it. Just go after what you want this month. <laughs> um you know, as one door closes, another one opens. Yeah, but a door is opening for you anyway. So just run through it. You have to just like go, okay, I'm ready. Get on that little fire horse and go. So that is your love reading. And I will see you soon for April general readings. Ciao. Thanks so much for watching this video and getting all the way to the end of it. I really appreciate your support. If you are interested in other videos, click here. If you are interested in subscribing, go ahead and click here. Hit that notification bell so that you get alerted to when new videos come out and also when I do surprise live streams. And then if you're interested in winning a free 20-minute video uh, reading personally every month, go ahead and click right here. Mwah!